Hello dear friends, a great welcome to this series on Idea Statica Member. Myself Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 35. Here I will demonstrate how to verify a laterally unsupported, normally we call it as a laterally unrestrained beam using Idea Statica Member with respect to the Euro code, this is EN199311, normally we call it as EC3. So the problem statement used in the tutorial is shown here. We have a laterally unrestrained beam of span 6 meters that carries a concentrated load of value P at locations 1.5 meters from the support. The section to be verified is the GA240 and the material is S235. For the ultimate limit state, the value of P is 70 kN and for the serviceability limit state, P will be 25 kN. So before trying this problem in idea static R, I have performed the hand calculations as per your code. So towards that, first we calculate the elastic critical moment MCR, which is calculated to be 231.5 kN meter. Then we obtain the necessary parameters such as lambda bar LT, alpha LT, phi LT, and psi LT. The calculated values are already reported here. Now we proceed for the calculation of the design bending moment, or we call it as the design bending resistance considering the lateral torsion of buckling MBRD. And for this problem, the value of the bending resistance considering the LTB is worked out to be 131.2 kN meter. If there would have been no LTB, then the section would have a plastic moment capacity of 175 kN meter. That means for the problem, we find that the section capacity is reduced by a factor of almost 0.75 to the LTB. So now let me take you to the idea statica member. So the idea statica model that is used for the problem is shown here. As usual, the model, as you know, that it consists of basically two sets of numbers. That is, one is the analyzed member. So let me just provide you the parameters for the AM1. So as you can see, that uh, as stated in the problem statement, the analyzed member has got a cross section of HA240 and uh, it has a material of S235 grade. Now, coming to the later members, we have two later members one at this end and the other at the other end. And that is RM5, this is my RM5, and this is my RM6. And each of these members, for example, RM5, is of a cross section of GA300, it's of the same material as 235 and has got a length of 1 meters. And uh, the support conditions for this. Uh, later members are kept in such a way that they are restrained as far as the translations are concerned in both the x, y, and z directions. And the rotations are restrained only about the z axis, only about the x axis, whereas it's allowed to rotate about the major and the minor axis, r, y, and r, z. Now the same is the condition for RM6 also. This is my RM6, wherein it's the same member and it's the same material, and I have provided the same support conditions. Now, if you go to the AM1, we find that uh, an offset is also generated here, that is EZ of 30 mm, because we find that uh, the analyzed member it is of HEA 240 and uh, the later member it is of HEA 300. Means that there is a difference of 60 mm. Means that if we want to keep the TOS the same, the offset to be provided for the AM1 is equal to 60 by 2, that's equal to 30 mm. So if, you, if I just zoom this and you can see that, yes, so just We'll find that yes, the TOS for both the analyzed number as well as the later numbers are the same. That is why we have provided an offset of EZ, EZ of 30 mm. Right? So now let me take you to the other parameters. Basically, we have here the load conditions as usual. We have two load conditions. One is the LE1, that is the load that is used to generate the so called ultimate limit state. And here, as already stated in the problem, we have two concentrated loads, right? So here, as you can see, that it is provided over a small length of 0.1 meter. Accordingly, I have kept the loading intensity to be 700 kN per meter. So we have a concentrated load of 700 into 0.1, that is 70 kN downward. And it is applied for a width of 100 mm. In a similar way, we have provided the same load at a location of 4.5 meters by generating a uniformly distributed load that spans from 4.45 to 4.55, that's 4.1 meter length. 
and the distributed load for this length is 100 kilonewton per meter so that we apply a load of uh, 70 kilonewton at 4.5 meters as well so that's all about my le1 and as you can see that no loads are being applied on the later members so let me just rotate this a little bit okay so now going to the le2 you can see that as usual le2 uh, defines uh, the load that is corresponding to the serviceability limit state and here the only difference is that the load intensity remains uh, different so instead of 70 kN, we have to apply a load of 25 kN. Accordingly, we applied the load for the LE2, the same locations, that is 1.45, 1.55. And instead of 700, we have applied it as minus 250 kN per meter. So that we apply concentrated load of 25 kN each at these two locations. And here again, no loads are being applied over here. Now, having defined the analyzed members, related members, as well as the corresponding loading details, we can still go for the connections. As already repeated in the other tutorials, we simply uh, develop the connections between the R01 as well as the AM1 and uh, between the other related as well as the analyzed members just using the facility available in the idea static connection GUI. So, for example, as you can see that, so here I have developed the connections. As you can see, if you want to see, I can just edit the connection. Obviously, as you can see that this connection is between the two members, that is AM1 and RM5. So you can see that these are being these member sizes are being automatically populated over here. And uh, to develop these connections, we need to use two manufacturing operations. One is an notch operation, uh, which is applied on two portions. One, uh, as explained already in the previous tutorial, one notch is applied directly on the flange, and the parameters are already provided here. You must be familiar with it. And the other notch is provided directly on the web, right? So you can see that it is provided, this notch is provided directly on the web of AM1. So OPN1 and OPN2, it is basically for developing the notches in the flange as well as the web of AM1. Now the main manufacturing operation is the end plate, and that is used to develop the size thickness of the end plates as well as the boards. So you can see that as usual. So this is the end plate that is being developed. And all the parameters are provided here as you can see that's an m 248 volts are provided of four numbers each and the thickness of the plate is uh, as you can see that is 16 mm and it's again a s235 plate now in a similar way so you can just keep it down in a similar way we have also defined the con2 that is the connection at this end so if you want to see this i can just edit it so that it provides you the, all the connection details so as usual, you can see that this is a connection between AM1 and RM6. Okay, all the details are exactly the same as the connection provided at the beginning. So now we are ready for uh, uh, proceeding for the calculation. As I already stated earlier, the calculation in the idea setting member, it basically consists of one a material nonlinear analysis. So please remember that a material nonlinear analysis, that is MNA, will provide you the, the section capacity considering that the buckling effects are negligible or in other words assuming that the beam is fully restrained so if a beam is fully restrained mna is good enough for us or in this case as we know that the mna is not just sufficient because it's a laterally unrestrained beam so we want to carry out second one that is a linear buckling analysis also just to see how much of the plastic moment capacity is reduced so let us proceed for the calculation. So press this calculate button. So you can see that the material nonlinear analysis is uh, now running. And uh, obviously this will provide you the design bending moments. It provides you uh, what will be the strain distribution across the cross section, the stress distribution across the cross section. And then uh, having analyzed the results, uh, for this case, what we do is that we need to go for uh, the straight of LBA, yes. It is complete so now let me just straight away go to the check so that we'll be able to so as you can see that yes so here let me just uh, keep it off yes so this is the mesh geometry and here as you can see that under this load okay the section has got enough plastic resistance the strains are lesser much less than five percentage and MNA is able to take care of the 100% of the applied loads. 
Now here, uh, before proceeding for uh, uh, what we call as uh, the LBA, linear blocking analysis, let us just quickly go for the stress distribution. So the stress distribution will uh, provide us a guidance. Okay, so as you can see, for example, this is for LD2. We are not interested in LD2, we are interested in LD1 because LD1 defines basically the ULS ultimately the state. So in ULS, what will be the uh, corresponding stress distribution? So as you can see that, yes. So you can say, look here. So let me just, just zoom a little bit. So you can see that, yes, the flange, near the flange portions as expected, we have taken the material somewhere around, they say, between 175 to 200, okay, 175 to 200, and uh, you'll find that the web is uh, particularly in the range of 50 to 75. So it does mean that uh, we have enough capacity. If this would have been a naturally restrained beam, we have got enough capacity because the stresses have taken only to a level of 200 or approximately say 175 MPA. Now let me take you to the other one, for example, let us go for what will be the deflection you said. And for the deflection, let me just press the deformed button also. And please remember that the user is relevant only for the serviceability limit state. So what we can do is that we can just go for the user. So look here, the user is we have to define, ensure that it is for the LD2, that's the serviceability limit state. And uh, that provides you the distribution of uh, the vertical deflection, as you can see, there's a 10.4 mm maximum deflection that is uh, at the center, as you can see. And, uh, and this needs to be checked uh, against uh, the permissible limit provided in the course, could be L by 300 or L by 350, whatever it is. So that is regarding the, the stress distribution as well as the deflection checks. Now, you can also go for the internal forces, and that will provide you what will be the distribution of the bending moments under the applied loads. And uh, we can also see what's the maximum, so the yes, so this is the MY as a maximum moment. So let me just take you to the LE1. So under LE1, as you can see that uh, the moments are uh, 104.5, that is uh, almost 105 here. And as you can see that this is a trapezoidal diagram, right? It's a trapezoidal diagram that provides us uh, uh, basically the distribution of the bending moment all along the length of the beam. So you can see that this is the so this is a line, right? So so it's a trapezoidal bending moment because we have applied the two concentric loops. And uh, now uh, we need to find out what would be the factor of safety, right? Against the buckling. So let us proceed for the running of the linear buckling analysis. So we put the linear buckling analysis, we'll uh, calculate it so that we'll be able to find out what will be the exactly the capacity of the section considering the LBA also. And the LBA will provide you two sets of results. That is one is uh, what are the modes, right? What are the mode shapes? And what are the uh, factor of safety for the section against each of this mode? And this uh, will provide you a very good uh, insight into the way in which the beam is going to fail in the linear buckling. So I think that we are able to obtain the results now. So it is just calculating. Yes, so it's over. So that's about uh, the LBA. So let me take you. So this is a check. Now it is just uh, quickly off all the unwanted things on this diagram. Okay, fine. So now let us see the results of the linear buckling analysis. So see here, as I told you, so we are interested in LE1. That corresponds to the so-called the ULS ultimate limit state. And here you can see that for, for mode shape 1, 1.33, what does this mean? This means that, as I already told you, under LE1, we applied a load of 70 kN. This means that if the lateral torsion buckling need to occur, right, the load could be increased by another 33 percentage. That means approximately say 70 into 1.33, say approximately you can say the 90-92 kN. Then only the torsion LTB will occur. This means that presently the beam has got a factor of 
right, much greater than 1 against the lateral torsion buckling. Now, one important uh, parameter to be seen here is the more shapes. Now, as you can see that the more shapes, yes, let me just keep it like this. Okay, so let me just increase the, so deformed, because you have to press the deformed also. So that will provide you uh, what will be the corresponding uh, more shapes. And look here, there's a very beautiful more shape, this one. So you can see that this is something like half sine wave, right? Half sine wave. Wherein you will find, look here, here you will find that the tension flange is not that much affected, right? And you can see that, yes, there's a tough flange, there's a compression flange. It does just, you know, it has bent about the, what we call as, about the east minor axis. This is what we call as a lateral buckling. And again, you will find that the cross section has a twisted. It has also rotated, right, about its longitudinal axis. So this is all about the more shape one. So you can see that it is just represents a half cycle of a sine wave. Now, let me just take you to the other important ones. That's the more shape two. For more shape two, you will find that you have got a very large factor of safety. So, but in spite of that, here, this is how the more shape two looks like. So, this is here you will find that two cycles of the sign, right? So, this is how the bottom, the top flange has, you know, the subject to a lateral torsion buckling. Here, you please see that, yes, the section is subject to a lateral displacement. Also, you will find that the cross section is rotated. This is this entire phenomenon is normally we call as the LTB lateral torsion buckling, right? So we conclude that yes, your beam under LE1 condition has got a factor of safety of 1.33. That means it has got approximately a lateral torsional moment capacity of 105, which is the design beam moment multiplied by 1.33. That is approximately uh, you will find the 90 multiplied by 90 95 kilonewton meter is approximately moment is 105. Sorry, 105 kilonewton meter is the approximate design bending moment and the capacity and the capacity as we find that it has got a factor of 1.33 does mean that the beam can take an approximately a moment of 1.33 into 105 so approximately 133 and this works out to be the value that we have already calculated 135 kN meter so we find that yes there is a very good resemblance between the hand calculations and the idea of calculations so I would request all my friends, you perform a hand calculations and this hand calculations will provide you a lot of insight into the problems and it also provides a lot of confidence to the design engineers and it also helps you to understand the results of the idea statica to a better degree. Okay, So that is all about this tutorial. So I don't want to take you to the report because as we have seen that the report is not that much of a good session. And definitely in the coming tutorials, I will uh, take you to one more GMA analysis. There is a geometrical material nonlinear analysis with uh, imperfections. And that will be another part where, for example, for this particular tutorial, if you want to add some kind of an imperfections, which is due to the non-alignment of the member axis or the supports, etc., we can add that imperfection into this LBA and perform a GMA. That will be taken up later in the tutorial. So that's all about. So please start making your own calculations and then proceed for the idea statica and that puts or a lot of insight into the way in which the beam is behaving. So here you can easily see, yes, it has undergone a lateral torsion of buckling and has got a safety margin of 33% or 1.33 factor of safety. So that's all. We will uh, see the, we'll come up with a new tutorial uh, with a different kind of a problem. For example, in this case, you will find that uh, the beam is laterally unresting for the entire span. In some cases, we will find that the, um, the beams that transfer the loads to this member provide a lateral restraints between these two beam segments. Only for a part of the beam span, the beam will be laterally unsupported. So we will take up a case in the next tutorial. So till then, bye and have a nice day.